Welcome back to the shop. Over the past couple of weeks, we've been busy, and as you can see, something is missing. So as I said, over the last couple of weeks, we have been really busy in the shop. We put together a couple of different projects, but we did put a lot of work in on Lunar One. So today we're gonna do a walk around on Lunar One. I'm gonna get you guys all caught up on where we sit with the 2JZ Baja 4 runner. So a lot of the parts that I included on Lunar One are some things you're gonna find on a traditional long travel style 4Runner build. But a lot of the components also came from the world of drifting. So as you can see, I've got Lunar 2, that's our off-road kind of, I guess you could say run of the mill, long travel 4Runner build. So the style of driving that I wanna do in Lunar 1 is a little bit different. It's not your classic trophy truck or stadium truck or really, I don't know, any kind of driving I've seen done. I wanna marry the two worlds of the off-road, the Baja style trucks with the world of drifting. So let's go through step by step and I'm gonna share with you exactly how I put this truck together. So in the back of Lunar One, I have this East Coast Gear Supply Dana 60. Now what's unique about this is that I opted to have them put a true track in it instead of doing some other options that like an air locker or maybe even an Eaton locker like a lot of guys would do on an off-road build. Now this is gonna lock up the rear very similar to what a limited slip differential is gonna do in a drift car. Another thing you're gonna find in a lot of drift cars is a hydraulic e-brake. So I wanted to incorporate that into the Lunar One build. The hydraulic e-brake is from Rad Industries and Rad Industries is owned by Dan Burkett, who's a professional Formula D driver. Among the parts that we did buy from Rad Industries, another one is the Samsonis transmission. Now this is a sequential transmission. We've talked about this a little bit before in previous videos, but what this transmission is going to allow us to do, it's gonna allow us to flat foot shift. So we'll use the clutch to start, and after that, it's just foot down and we're grabbing gears. So this is gonna add a lot to the drivability of the 4Runner. Now with the Samsonis transmission and the Hydro, it seems only right to add a quick release steering wheel. This is another thing that you're gonna find in a lot of, I guess off-road vehicles too, but a lot of drift cars, it's a quick release steering wheel. In the event of a crash or actually to get in and out, it's really nice to be able to pull off your steering wheel. It makes exit and entry super easy. So this thing snaps right on. So this column runs all the way through and we made custom steering linkage to be able to use this steering column in the truck. Also, we fabbed up, well, pretty much everything you see around, the roll cage, everything else, but we made this steering wheel column mount to mount up that sweet steering column. On that steering column, I have a PRP deep dish steering wheel. This is something that I got from 8Runner Off-Road, as well as these PRP Tangos. 8Runner makes perfect mounts to be able to mount up the Tangos, as well as mount them into the 4Runner. So I have the seat brackets from 8Runner Off-Road, as well as the side mounts. All of this together comes together to create a really cohesive cockpit and when you're sitting in this thing, it feels like it just really wants to go fast. Now to be able to use the Samsonis transmission, it does require a clutch pedal. So what we did is we took a clutch pedal out of a Tacoma. Now this is out of a third generation Tacoma, manual Tacoma, and it actually bolts directly up to the firewall on the 4Runner, which means that maybe someday in the future, we might be seeing some fifth gen manuals running around. Now for the electronics in the vehicle, we partnered up with Link Engine Management. We are gonna be installing this compact dash onto this steering column mount. This thing is gonna give us all of the onboard information we need to know, as well it's gonna pair up perfectly with the Link ECU and all of the Link sensors and PDMs that we're gonna be incorporating into this. All of that is gonna be installed by Brian over at Hartsock Motorsports. We can't wait to get this truck over there because that's one of the last things it needs to be able to fire up and run. Now keeping us safe inside of the 4Runner is gonna be this roll cage. Now this is something that actually I bent and welded all in house using the Rogue Fab two bender as well as some of the welders that I have inside. Now Rogue Fab, that has been an amazing company for us to work with. They've ran us parts, they've overnighted us parts, they've provided any sort of information that we need when it came to bending it or welding the cage. So I can't say enough good things about them. They're actually local to us. They're just like about a half hour away. So it's been really nice to work with those guys. And if you guys wanna build a cage, and do it yourself. It's a lot easier than you think. So make sure you check them out, check out their bender. I use it all the time in the shop. 
I actually used it to build the bash bars for the drift car as well. So very versatile, make sure you check that out. So we've talked about it in some previous videos, but I do wanna highlight this. Toyo Tires sent us their new Toyo Open Country Trail, which is the new tire they've released. And we actually have 10 of them. We put four of them on Lunar 2, four of them on Lunar 1. These are on some Method negative 44 offset bead locks. These things are gonna rip up the trails. They're gonna hang with us on the dunes and hopefully, hopefully we'll roast a set of them off on the pavement too. Now up top of Lunar One, we have six Baja Designs LP6s. Now those things, they drain power like you wouldn't believe, but they are brighter than sunlight. Now they are overpowering for almost any alternator on the market, but we hooked up with Dan again over at Rad Industries, and he has an alternator that is going to be able to handle those things. Now that coupled with Link Engine Management's PDMs is gonna let us run those things with absolutely no problem while running everything else on the vehicle. Now on the corners of the vehicle, pretty much everything is hooked up with some kind of Wicked Creations component. So Wicked Creations has been a big part of this build. They have really helped us out with customizing suspension that maybe they had on the shelf, but didn't exactly work for this build. Those guys over there are great. I can't recommend them enough. This is the five over kit. So this is five inches wider on either side. Also comes with their upper control arms. We also have integrated in here some of Wiki Creation's upper control arm braces. Now, we did take that a step further. I hacked off the top of the spring perch mounts and I put in 10 inch coilovers from Fox. So this thing has more coilover than really any other Forerunner I've seen. And we made some custom in-house coilover mounts as well. Now up front of both the Forerunners, I have Alpha Rex headlights. On Lunar 2, these are the new Alpha Rex Novas. And these things are super sick. It's all black internals. But for Lunar 1, I wanted something a little bit different. These are the Alpha Rex Lux. So these also all black internals. There's a little bit different styling. Both of them do like the really cool dance maneuver that Alpha Rex is known for. I love these headlights. They're definitely a statement piece on both trucks. I can't wait to film them both doing their little thing together. It's one of the coolest features, I think, of any headlight. All right, let's go inside the engine bay. Let's talk about what's going on in there because that's where all the fun stuff is happening. So what you can't see is behind this is that Samsonas transmission that we were talking about. That thing is rowdy. It can handle up to 2,000 foot pounds of torque. That thing is ready to take any abuse that I can throw at it. And I plan on throwing a lot. So this motor, this is a 2JZ out of a Supra. We've talked about that before, but this isn't just a 2JZ. We spent a lot of money at the machine shop getting the head ported, having the bottom end built. So this has forged rods, forged pistons. This thing's built to handle well over a thousand horsepower. Now I'm not saying that's what we're gonna run in it, but it's built for it. Motors kind of make what they make, so we'll see what we get on the dyno. But until then, we're just gonna keep building and we're gonna build this thing to be able to make as much power as we possibly can. So the engine bay is filled with goodies from Rad Industries. We have Rad Industries upper water necks. We have the alternator like we were talking about before. Also, this is a power steering pump bracket that comes from Rad Industries. They, I mean, Dan really does everything to make the 2JZ not only look cool, but perform at its absolute peak performance. So if you guys are looking at a 2JZ build, whether it's for a 4Runner or for a drift car, definitely look up Rad Industries. They have stuff that is gonna keep the motor alive. Now, the things that are gonna make it not wanna stay alive, that's this guy right here, the big old Garrett Turbo. This thing is going to push a ton of boost through this motor, and I can't wait to spool that thing up and let this thing rip and burn off those Toyo tires. I wanna leave them looking like race slicks. Rip all the knobbies off, do donuts until they pop. All right guys, let's talk about the rear suspension, but I need to make a little more room. All right, that should do it. Underneath the truck, there's more Wicked Creations components. Also, there's some eight runner off-road components that we built here in house. The upper link mounts are eight runner off-road, the upper links are eight runner off-road, but the lower stuff, that's all from Wicked Creations. So if you guys are wanting to four link a forerunner like this, you're gonna need to get some lower links. These lower links, the way these are built, they're gusseted, they're super strong. Pretty much the truck could probably go through a nuclear blast and the only thing remaining would be these links. They are that strong. We're gonna put bypasses as well as these internally bypassed coilovers together and it's gonna make a dynamic package. It's gonna make this thing land soft as a cloud no matter how high we jump it. Now there's still quite a bit of work left to do on Lunar One, but it is coming together quickly. And I know I've said that a lot of times in our videos, but it feels like every time we make progress, it's just one step closer and it gets, it just starts to feel real. So we have, well, quite a bit. We still have the intercooler to do. We still have the radiator to do. It still has to go out for wiring. 
But, I mean, at this point, we set it down on the ground, rolled it out, we've actuated the suspension, verified that everything works as far as everything that's been built to this date. So make sure you guys like, subscribe, make sure you hit notifications, and if you don't already, make sure you go over to Instagram. It's at T-R-D-L-U-N-4-R. Shoot us a follow there. That way you can stay up to date. I post stories. I also have a giveaway going on right now where I'm giving away some Alpha Rex headlights. Make sure you guys stay plugged in there. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. I can't wait to get this thing running.